<laughs> we'll talk about market market valuations and uh, and all these factors called, uh, around the macros with uh, Sishadri Sen, who's uh, joining us now. Uh, he's the head of research at Alchemy and is a veteran strategist uh, in the market. Sishadri, afternoon. Thanks so much for your time. First of all, I'd like to understand your view on the commentary which came in, commentary on growth, commentary on internals of inflation. Because we have never been, the market has never been so obsessed on macros uh, the way we have in the last six, eight months. How did you observe it? Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Ajay, for thank, thank you for inviting me to the show. Yes, we, indeed, the, the commentary I think was very positive. I think broadly, what the RBI is telling us is that uh, the excess accommodation that was provided during, you know, and I'm, and I'm uh, sort of coming, jumping straight to the conclusion here. Uh, that the excess accommodation that was provided uh, during COVID times will be withdrawn. Once that is done, the RBI will probably take a pause. So if you look at a long-term chart of, of where interest rates is, if you look at, uh, you know, a 10, 15-year chart of, of policy rates, we are going nowhere into the upper, uh, you know, quartile of that range. We'll be, we'll be somewhere stuck in the middle uh, if, the, if what the RBI expects pans out. Uh, and that is what what I think is is giving a lot of support to the market. The market thinks that interest rates will stabilize at a long term median level, which is not really damaging to growth, etc. There will be a downward adjustment to value to to uh, PE multiples, which has in fact largely played out. Uh, and therefore, the worst news is in the price. Of course, you know this is a this is a you know developing situation, as you just pointed out. Oil prices is, is 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 something that is difficult to predict at this point. Uh, global geopolitical factors are difficult to predict at this point. But you could also argue that the worst has happened on that front, and you know now there is a little greater visibility. So, short summary: uh, the the news isn't as bad as one thought, uh, but you know one will have to keep a hawk eye on because. Uh, we have been negatively surprised in the last uh, uh, we as in the, the market has been negatively surprised over the last uh, 9 to 12 months so uh, the macros is something one shouldn't take an eye off at this stage uh, but, but but there is a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, positives coming out of the RBI commentary Shadri, uh, I'd like your opinion on growth growth on GDP front which is the country's growth Growth on corporate earnings front, which market uh, valuations are based on. Uh, do you think that the scale back of growth, yesterday IMF2, the latest agency to scale back growth, uh, and even the earnings growth adjustments have been done for now, do you think? Has all of that been priced in by the market? Or do you think there is possibility and scope for further compression in valuation of the market, purely scaling back on growth? Well, I think growth should be strong, uh, you know, through through the year. I know that there is there is there are some downgrades coming through, uh, but you know, starting from the simple fact that this will probably be the first disruption free financial year. FI twenty three will be probably the first disruption free year in terms of lockdown. That itself gives an impetus to growth. Um, I believe by the second half. Uh, the bottom of pyramid earnings should start to bounce back, and that would be a a, 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 a fillip to 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 broad consumption. Uh, and I also think that the capex cycle will will pick up both, you know, in terms of the government spending and in terms of private capex again, probably towards the second half of the financial year. But there's visibility on all these three levers for growth. So I'm quite constructive about India's GDP growth and not just FI23. I think we are in for a longish spell of 7% uh, plus growth, which we haven't seen uh, for quite some time, uh, you know, in the latter half of the previous decade. Uh, so uh, so the GDP growth, I think, would be constructive. There may be tweaks. <coughs> upwards and downwards but the primary drivers uh, remain and we go i go back to the first comment i make if interest rates stabilize at median levels uh, compared to history that will <coughs> my apologies that will not be uh, a disruption to growth so i'm not too 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 worried about about overall growth coming down uh, the second point that you ask on earnings growth um, if you look at consensus estimates we are in for 3 years of double digit earnings growth uh, for the nifty uh, uh, you know, through from FI 22, 23, and 24. I think there is very little risk. We recently did a sectoral 
uh, you know, uh, analysis of, of where the, the, the Nifty consensus growth is. And apart from a couple of sectors, which constitute about maybe, you know, 15-20% of the overall Nifty earning growth, there doesn't seem to be a great deal of downside risk to any of the, uh, of the, of the broader sectors in terms of how growth will pan out. So my sense is that, the, the, is that you will see both strongest GDP growth and you will see broad Nifty earnings growth uh, through the next two years, FI 23 and 24. And that is why you will find a lot of support for market at slightly lower level. We've already seen that. At, you know, at certain levels of the market, it, it tends to bounce back despite all the negative macro news, especially on the global front that we are seeing. Okay, let's talk about how you are looking at your portfolio or the construction strategy uh, which you are adopting. Manufacturing is a theme which you like and it kind of makes sense the way uh, we are doing well. Early signs of CapEx cycle, even uh, as BI chairman spoke about it on the channel with me today along with RBI governor. Which area of manufacturing uh, or many themes also, multiple themes, which you are trying to fit into your portfolio? See, we are looking at manufacturing across, you know, manufacturing is a broad word. Uh, uh, but for cattle goods is one area. It's, it's a sector that was out of favor for a really long time. There is a, a survivorship bias uh, among companies which are still there because a lot of the weaker companies have fallen by the wayside. So whoever is there, it is in a very good position to capture the growth which we think will be strong over the next two years. Uh, we are seeing some auto ancillaries, which, which, which uh, you know, should start to look interesting at some point. Automobiles, which you know, technically is also manufacturing, is another area where you know, after three or four really bad years, uh, once the chip shortage starts to ease and there's some signs of that easing, there is no, uh, you know, despite all the headwinds, demand on the ground across the automobile space remains fairly strong. Uh, so, so there, you know, as you said, manufacturing is a broad word. Uh, but these are some of the sectors, capital goods, uh, automobiles, auto ancillaries, uh, where uh, where we are, where we think that the next two, you know, couple of years should be fairly strong. Right. What about IT? IT also saw compression of earnings because growth uh, was being scaled back and, you know, the mother market, NASDAQ, was being uh, decompressed in terms of valuation down 25-30%. Uh, do you think that growth worries are overstated in IT? And what about wage inflation impacting their margins? Um, so uh, you, you asked, I think, three separate questions. So, so let me start with, with, with multiples. Yes, I think multiples were stretched. And with rising interest rates, there is a natural compression of multiples. That, I think, has largely played out. Uh, and that is almost only to be expected when, when you know, the, the global monetary policy cycle turned adverse at the beginning of this calendar year. Uh, the second is earnings growth. Uh, we flagged that, you know, for the moment, FY24 earnings growth could be vulnerable if the U.S. goes into a recession. Uh, there is enough data to show that uh, through through the past, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, IT earnings is a little cyclical with, with, you, with U.S. growth. Uh, but, you know, that will be temporary because the larger opportunity remains very big. And, we, you know, we, we're looking at some data to show that, you know, these slowdowns usually last for a very short period and, and you know, tend, tend to bounce back. Uh, so, so as far as IT is concerned, there may be a little bit of vulnerability to FY24 growth. But beyond that, the longer term story remains, remains intact. Uh, the valuations, I think, have, you know, the froth in the valuations has, has now come off and most of the stocks are available at reasonable valuations. And um, and you, you're talking about the, the margin pressures from wage inflation. I think this year is when the IT companies go back to the campuses to recruit. They were caught a little, uh, you know, uh, off guard uh, when the first initial demand surge came. And a lot of them had to go subcontracting or, or pass on really, um, uh, you know, huge wage hikes to lateral recruits. Now that their machine of recruiting from campuses is back, I don't think wage inflation, it will be there for sure, the wage inflation across, uh, you know, all sectors in India, but it will not be to the, to the extent that there was, uh, you know, in FI22. So, so if, if you take, take an overall look, growth will be strong, except maybe a little bit of vulnerability to FI24. 
a margin should be stable because most of the wage inflation pressures are over and uh, all you're left with is valuations valuations i think have corrected so overall i think the sector does look attractive from here on right all right chadri we'll let you go on that one thanks so much for your inputs on market and the